Amarillo's first shooting of the New Year took place over the weekend, and now Amarillo police need your help locating a third suspect. They say he is not a threat to the public, but they do need information on his whereabouts. Good morning, Ali and Adrian. We're out at the Tri-State Fairgrounds to give you a little sneak peek of the Jurassic Quest experience. Right now, I'm with a baby dinosaur. Tell me about yourself. I'm just kidding. We're here with Riley with Jurassic Quest. So tell me a little bit about this experience. Well, hello, Allie. Currently, we're standing on the side of the road in front of one of the houses, along with three others that have been damaged, as you can see right behind me. Very, very important that you are prepared if you're leaving and planning on traveling today. But again, TxDOT definitely says that they do not recommend you traveling because accidents like this happen and it could happen to you. Good morning, Allie. Well, we're currently on the southwest part of town. We're on Hollywood Road, about to head on to Sonsi here in a little bit. But right now, roads are looking pretty good. Let's take a look at what we're seeing right now. Road conditions looking fine this morning if you're planning on heading out right now. And I know you can't see much behind me, but this is where the new Bucky's will be located. I'm currently on Southeast I-40 in Airport Boulevard where the new Bucky's location will be in. COVID has put a stop to a lot of concerts, so how are you adjusting back to performing? Linda Barnett was last seen here on South Kentucky Street between Southwest 5th Avenue and Southwest 6th Avenue. Tips continue to come in this past year, but police still have no leads. Well, I'm outside the facility right now where, as you can see behind me, there are a group of employees here standing for what they believe in, and they're telling me this number is only going to grow as people are just getting out of work right now. Well, I'm joined by one of the employees. This is Bradley Johnson. He's going to tell us a little bit about his goal. So what do you all plan to accomplish here? Well, good morning, Allie. Yes, it is definitely cold out and the snow is coming down, so you definitely want to be careful on the roads if you're heading out this morning. Let's take a look. We're on I-40 and Western. I did want to show <laughs> if any of my bosses are watching, I have a shovel and I'm going to keep okay, everyone perfect. safe in the parking well, lot this morning. Some, uh, <laughs> I'm at Comanche Trail Golf Course where it happened. Police say a staff member was the one who found the body around 7 this morning. After months of preparing and immediately starting to plan for the event after the pumpkin farm closed, the holiday event is now open with food, activities and 30 plus attractions. The horizon of apartment life in downtown is changing as units become available in the first being Southwest Tower, the tallest building between Dallas and Denver. For almost 50 years, the building has stood at the focal point for the Amarillo skyline, and by the end of this summer, 14 brand new apartments will be available for lease. Adding residential units is a core goal for redeveloping downtown. What we wanted to create was high-end living you know, here in Amarillo. Having downtown residential is just one of the catalyst projects that uh, Amarillo needs. We've checked so many catalyst projects off the list. It's one of a few left on the list. Leasing agent Aaron Emerson says since the owners of the tower bought it back in 2008, they have extensively refurbished the building, which will still largely have commercial tenants. The biggest obstacles to converting a, an office building to residential is the cost. You know, it costs a lot of money to do it compared to just building nice new office space. The items that are so costly are infrastructure. Living in these apartments, you are going to get access to where I'm at right now, the highest point in Amarillo at the Amarillo Club on the 30th and 31st floor of the First Bank Southwest Tower. Other features residents will have access to will be a gym, a yoga studio, a coffee shop, covered parking, 24-7 security guard service, a full-service bank, on-site engineers and management, and much more. Each unit is individually climate controlled. Most of the apartment will be controlled by a, a system that the tenant has control over, um, and it's separate from the building. So it'll run 24 hours a day when the building you know, may shut off at you know, 7 p.m. Emerson said he believes the people who will be interested in these apartments will be business professionals, empty nesters, and possibly local businesses for corporate apartments. The price range will be, you know, a one-bedroom apartment will be somewhere in the ballpark of, let's say, $1,950 a month. Um, two bedrooms going to be somewhere in that $3,000 a month range. Emerson says they are still finalizing some details and there has already been some notable interest from people. He suggests contacting Gott Wittenberg Emerson Commercial Real Estate for more information. Taylor Mitchell, News Channel 10. I knocked on every door today on the block of this neighborhood and spoke with neighbors who say they've seen a lot of traffic the past three months of people coming in and out of the home behind me where it happened. 
Neighbors say Trevor Riley was shot in his home Friday night. I spoke with one who says her father was approached by a woman that night as he was working on his RV and she asked him for a ride home. She saw a lady just leave the house and of course we didn't think nothing of it, but she came up to him and asked him for a ride and it was very suspicious. And two days later we find out that there was a murder and now we're just thinking like, was she, was she part of it? Was she involved? Her father declined to give her a ride home and made a statement to the police. Aragon says she never knew Riley for my whole life and I can tell you these neighbors and but I've never met that man and they but you can tell there was suspicious activity going on I know that the neighbor had said that after they found the body the late the, that night there was cars just being really suspicious coming through our alleys and that's when we called APD Another neighbor told me she saw Riley pacing back and forth along the street about two weeks before he was found dead, with no coat on during cold weather. We've seen the young man walking back and forth here every now and then, but we never talked to him or anything. He says he believes Riley was new to the neighborhood and moved into the house around two or three months ago. And there was always a lot of cars around the area there, but you know. Taylor Mitchell, News Channel 10.